This is the story of Sal Cooper, the strongest shadow in the Cooper family. He dedicated his life to his family and did all of the dirty work to keep them on top. In response, his family abandoned him by framing him as a traitor, and he was executed. So now we see how he uses his second chance at life to take revenge on everyone who backstabbed him. The story begins in the hall, as our protagonist Sal Cooper kneels on the ground, holding his sword in front of the master he trusted and the entire army of their family. This is when his master, Alan, ordered Sal's fast execution for betraying his family in the name of the Cooper family head. Sal grinds his teeth in rage, knowing he has been framed unfairly. He kills the guards with his sword and points it at his master's throat, only to be struck from behind with a spear. Before dying, he exclaims, If there is a next life, I will definitely rip all of them to shreds. He found himself unexpectedly lying on the grass. As he stands up quickly, wondering where he is because everything feels familiar, he gets splashed with water by a lady servant who orders him to clean himself quickly because someone is about to take him somewhere. Sal felt insulted by her attitude toward him. He looks at the woman angrily, but the lady servant smacks his face hard and exclaims, What's with that rotten gaze? After falling down, he turns his head and sees his reflection in the water, which shocks him to see his small body. He laughs to himself and smiles evilly, knowing that he has returned to the time when he was three. He tightened his fist and repeated the phrase, I was truly reborn. In his previous life, he was Cooper's family's shadow, and he, along with other shadows, had to face the family's worst training at a young age. He had murdered people, set fires, and done all of the family's dirty work himself. Shadows willingly endured the sufferings. As a reward, the family provided them with wealth and glory. Being an illegitimate son of the family, he was determined to change his fate of being bullied by others. So he went through rigorous training, despite his desire to die at times. Despite being neglected, he took the initiative to fight for his family. So, to carry out their orders, he murdered enemies and destroyed cities that opposed the family. In doing so, he raised his family above everyone else. So he expected his family to greet him with valuable awards, but instead, he was accused of treason and executed unfairly. Then he recalls worlds from his master, who reveals that from the moment Sal became a shadow, he was bound by the shadow's oath to him. So, Sal's power would be transferred to his master, and whatever damage his master received would be transferred to Sal. As for glory and money, he was never going to get it from the start. So Sal gets furious and attempts to strike him, but is stopped by Shadow's oath and struck from behind with the spear. So he promised that, in his current life, he would never make that mistake again. Then his stomach growl indicated that he hadn't eaten anything in the previous three days. Then he sees a rat and believes everything is fine. In his past life on the battlefield, rats were more tasty than human meat. But before he could grab it, he was interrupted by some guys who called him trash and informed him that young Master Alan wanted to see him, so they told him to follow them. Then he recalls being chosen to become a shadow around that time, but all of his initiation memories have vanished due to his blood magic curse. That's when Alan entered into a blood oath with Sal. Sal now believes he can change things and bites a guy's hand to free himself while the other guy tries to punch him while yelling, don't be an arrogant brat. Sal avoids the punch and snatches the sword, pulls it, slashing the guy's arm. The second man was horrified to watch this because of how easily he chopped the arm and wondered if he was even a kid. Sal smiles confidently as he holds his blade, knowing that the right opportunity to exact his revenge has finally arrived. Shadow Oath is a type of blood magic in which the caster who wishes to become the master spends a tiny amount of blood to transform the target into his shadow. Then Shadow will be unable to hurt his master and must endure all of the master's injuries. In addition, his master will benefit from his abilities and growth. However, due to its highly cruel nature, it was banned by the Empire over a century ago, and all magic books containing its secrets were destroyed, making it impossible for anybody to use it again. The scene shifts to Alan Cooper, who is now eight years old, trashing and abusing a man for not being able to control a wild dog but they have also been bullied by it and state that the Copper family's resources are being wasted because of losers like him. 
The guy apologizes and claims it was all due to his subordinates who neglected their duty. Then he approaches Sal, asking can crap like him dares to touch his people, and informs guards to put him up in the dungeon. As the guards proceed to do so, they are interrupted by a lady who is Alan's mother, Hera Cooper, the matriarch of the Cooper family. She explains that because Sal has been neglected since childhood, it is normal for him to act out and that now is not the time to punish him because the oath-taking ceremony is more important. She also advises Alan to remember what she has taught him before and to focus on completing it today. Alan wonders why his mother insisted on choosing Sal, a lowly illegitimate child, to be his shadow. However, he believes that he will annihilate him once he finds the right opportunity. He agrees to do as his mother wishes. Then she says she will take everyone outside so that no one can disturb the ceremony, orders everyone to follow her outside, casts a soundproof spell, and tells the guard not to let anyone disturb the young master. Guards do as Hera ordered. Then everyone is handed a cup of holy water, and Alan toasts that all of them will be members of the Shadow Army from now on, then asks everyone to swear an oath for the family. Then everyone begins to take the pledge, but Sal is uninterested and remains mute, drinking the holy water. Suddenly, everyone falls unconscious. Alan then discloses that it was a drug, not holy water, and considers everyone a bunch of idiots for failing to recognize it. Alan begins to construct a shadow oath when he believes he is successful. He believes he is a genius and wishes to notify his mother, so he turns to go out, but his legs get numb and he is unable to move suddenly. He believes this is a side effect of the shadow oath, but his mother has never informed him of anything, so he becomes terrified and begins to call for his mother. Then Sal gets up, as he was only acting from the start, and calls Alan a coward who only knows how to hide behind his mother's back. Sal informs him that his mother has used a spell to create a sound barrier in order not to disturb him before completing the shadow oath. So no matter how loud he shouts, she will not hear him. Alan begins to cry like a baby as Sal stands there menacingly with his sword. Ala then goes on to ask how he can be awake and how he knows about the Shadow Oath. Sal asks if he's afraid and assures him that he knows more than just that. Such as how to reverse the Shadow Pledge, he strikes at the center of the spell circle, wondering what his reaction will be. Alan's heart begins to hurt severely, so he asks Sal what he intends to do with him. Sal thinks. In his previous life, he paid the price for trusting him, but in this life, he will reclaim everything that belongs to him and return Alan's favor from the previous life. Then a guard notifies Hera that the magic she cast was broken. Hera Cooper seems to be worried about her son. Then we see Alan is recovering in his room as the butler informs his master Hera Cooper that Alan's body is fine. He must have fainted because he used too much magical power, and the soundproof spell broke due to a guard's incompetence. Therefore he has sent the guard to be executed. Hera then instructs them to feed the corpse to the dogs. The butler agrees. Then butler expresses concern for Alan, stating he appears to be uneasy because he is young. While Alan is contemplating, he feels as if he is forgetting something. But Alan is eventually comforted by his mother, who tells him that he should not be concerned about shadows because it is typical for powerful people to prey on the weak. Alan then declares himself the future head of the Cooper family. How can he be bothered by the poor animals who are born to give their lives for him? And asks her mother if he is wrong. She seems satisfied by his attitude and says, that's my son, and tells him he can ask her for any reward he wants. And Alan says mother is best while holding her. However, Sal is listening to their conversation from the window while admiring their mother and son's affection. And adds it's an awful night for her because since that day, Alan Cooper has become Sal Cooper's shadow. In his previous life, while fighting for his family, he uncovered a magic book with records on shadow oaths. He proudly handed it to his family, but he didn't anticipate he was already a victim of the shadow oath before then. But he was fortunate as he remembered the contents of the books, and when combined with his expertise, he was able to reverse the shadow oath. But he is still too weak to go against them with only a three-year-old physique and wants to grow stronger starting from there. So, his first step toward growing stronger is to visit the Flaming Cliff. This is the Cooper family's testing ground, built to choose strong shadows willing to make sacrifices for the family. 
It is comparable to how Prometheus stole the spark for humanity and gladly sacrificed himself, enduring the eagle's pecks day and night. The Cooper family also threw a bunch of ten-year-olds and younger into the blazing cliff. They ordered them to cross over the thorns and instructed the eagles to nibble on their flesh. Even with their last breaths, they are not permitted to give up. Until the first shadow went up the mountain and obtained the blessings of the eagle, Griffin, with the blessing he would possess a body that would never be wounded, no matter how much it was attacked or pecked. When the time came, all of the kids, including Sal, gathered at the flaming cliff. A man with a bow stood in front of them, informing everyone that they only had three days and that no matter what techniques they utilized, the only goal for this test was to reach the mountain alive. He's Enos Walker, the Shadow's training officer. He also reminded kids that escapees would be put to death. The kids were terrified except Sal, who knew just what to do. All right, Shadows, set forth for a bright future. Enos stated before blowing his whistle. Everyone then hurried to do their work. They were frightened, but Enos noticed something. That is Sal, who was just relaxing while strolling and whistling with his mouth. Enos couldn't understand why Sal remained calm while everyone else panicked. The kids were all walking in the same direction, but Sal was going his own way. Enos subordinate then informed him that Sal is a member of the Cooper family and the illegitimate son who offended Alan Cooper yesterday. Then Sal starts to climb the cliff and seeing what he's doing makes both Enos and his subordinate laugh, saying that Sal is so foolish for not taking the slope and climbing the cliff wall barely. They were confident that Sal would tumble before even reaching the midway mark. Enos subordinate proposed that they retrieve Sal's corpse because they expected him to die at this rate. But then Enos replied there was no need for it. Now is the time for that guy to turn up. An eagle appears, scaring kids since they know it is a monster. Sal eventually climbed to the top of the cliff and discovered the remains of the children who had been attacked by the eagle. The eagle stared at Sal. Sal was hanging from the cliff. Enos says he irritated young Master Alan yesterday. Why don't we take advantage of this opportunity to get rid of him by borrowing the griffin? and taking his bow out, he pointed his shot at Griffin the Eagle, claiming that he would make the young master happy with it. He released his arrow to hit an eagle's little feather. At the same time, Sal climbs the cliff. Griffin was furious for daring to attack him. He charged Sal to release his wrath, claiming that ignorant humans desired to die. He attempted to attack Sal, but he moved aside to avoid its beak. He used his magical abilities and hopped onto the eagle's body, he was confident because he had learned a lot from his previous experiences. Griffin turned intelligent after consuming a large number of human brains and can communicate with humans. It reached an agreement with the Cooper family to help them select shadows in exchange for bait. Those who receive the Griffin's blessing will be rewarded with a body that cannot be destroyed. It loves riches and gems and has one offspring. Griffin was screeching in misery when Sal struck its head. Sal knew that griffins are naturally stubborn and intelligent, much like humans. If he does not entirely conquer it, he will never be able to tame it. That is why he can only use this move and strike a strong sword attack towards the griffin but griffin avoids it and quickly blows him away with the wind orb. Sal almost fell down the cliff. Fortunately, he was able to grip onto the cliff and climb back. He admitted that he was too careless, not realizing that he was now a three-year-old child, not a 30-year-old adult, so it was pointless for him to use what he had mastered the sword technique in his previous life because, with his current physique and strength, he'd still be blown away before getting close to the griffin. Fortunately, he discovered a solution. He could approach the cave nearby. He was panting profusely, but he had no intention of abandoning what he had started. The griffin unleashes another wind orb and attacks Cell, but he was able to avoid it. He was well aware that the griffin's power would increase from level 1 to 10 with each wind orb released, and if the 10th wind orb was unleashed, not even 100 of him would be able to escape. He instantly realizes something. He stopped running and jumped, deciding to take the griffin's strike and harness its wind force to drive himself to the cave because he couldn't avoid it. He managed to make it and soared away to the cave. He then activates his shadow oath which reduces his energy consumption while also absorbing Alan's strength. Alan fainted again, and his subordinate panicked and shouted for help. At that point, Sal successfully entered the cave. 
He then rushed inside, and the griffin also instantly entered the cave following him, promising Sal that there was no way for him to flee. But then the griffin stopped and gazed viciously at Sal. It was because Sal was holding his son, who was pleading for rescue. Sal was aiming his blade at the infant eagle, smirking to mock the griffin. Sal then says few people know that the powerful griffin's cub was born with broken wings and cannot fly. The griffin asked as to what he was hoping to accomplish with his child. Sal then advised him to relax because he had no intention of harming the little eagle. He also told the griffin that he could heal the baby eagle's wings and help him soar. The griffin was perplexed, and Sal explained that he could make it happen. But there was a condition. Enos and his subordinate do not hear any noises from Sal or the griffin, leading them to believe that Sal has been eaten by the griffin as a result. They both decided to depart and report the failure of Sal and the other children to Alan, so they could gain some favor. But as they moved away, Sal, riding the griffin, arrived behind them, and Sal says he'll send both of them to meet Alan. Sadly, they will have to wait for him in hell. The two men were terrified and fled while yelling no. However, the griffin eventually ate them alive. Then the griffin spoke, I've fulfilled my commitment. Now it's your turn. Sal then instructed him to take him to the secret realm at the northernmost point of this mountain range. Meanwhile, they arrived in the land of stone and paused for a minute in front of a massive gate. Before entering, the griffin reminded Sal to take Perseus' sword as arranged, then assist him in obtaining Medusa's blood, which has the power to cure everything. Sal boldly grinned and assured the griffin not to worry. However, his objective is neither to obtain the griffin's desired holy sword nor to assist the griffin. He intends to borrow the griffin and use it to destroy the secret place. The griffin opened the gate, and while they were still standing outside, they noticed Medusa's statue, along with three other human-like statues. The griffin began attacking the sculptures, and he was astonished to see that the statues in this realm could move. Still, he effortlessly crashed the statues, but the shattered fragments regrouped and gradually merged into one. Sal collapsed to the ground as he saw it. He mentioned the statues' names, Dano, Enio, and Pemfrito. According to him, these three statues do not have the five organs just like the Gris sisters from mythology. Also, they have the same eyes and teeth. He also stated that the three statues could manipulate seawater since they were the daughters of sea deities, including Medusa. The Gris sisters merged into one after seeing this he shouted, Run! And the Gris sisters blasted them with water. Sal and the griffin fled, but the griffin decided it was pointless. What he wants now is for Sal to find a method to obtain the blade he desires. Sal pretends to be afraid while saying he is looking for the sword. At this point, the griffin decides that they will both die because the structure is likely to collapse. Sal informed the griffin that he was actively looking for the sword's whereabouts, and that he was even checking the wall to see if there was a method written on the runes there. But deep inside, he was relieved that the secret realm was about to collapse, and he looked forward to seeing everything in the realm destroyed. He was escaping, headed for the secret tunnel that he discovered in his former life. He stops suddenly, realizing that the amount of destruction at this time is insufficient. Sal says Griffin, the runes suggest you should remove the eye from up there. They will stop attacking then. The eye above the wall was looking at them. The Griffin then charged at it to do what Sal said. He then removed the eye. After that, the Gris sisters stopped casting their attacks and melted, changed into water. Sal then reveals to him that the runes state that Perseus found the location of Medusa only after snatching the Gris sisters' eyes. Hence, the eye represents the Gris sisters' weakness. What about the sword? Where is the blood that can heal my offspring? Did the runes express anything? The griffin inquired, and Sal pointed in the direction of the blade. It was placed just behind Medusa. According to Sal, Perseus used the sword to slay Medusa, splashing both red and green blood. The red blood can poison all living souls to death, while the green blood can cure all illnesses. But these are only legends. In this secret realm, there is another secret. The emergence of Perseus' sword coincides with Medusa's resurrection. Medusa awoke and prepared for an attack on the griffin. She launches an attack, 
and Sal takes advantage of the situation to flee. Once the Medusa statue is activated, he knows it will not stop until it is beheaded with the sword of Perseus. He opened the secret exit path, but Medusa attacked Sal because it opposed allowing him to leave. He was lucky to escape the attack. Sal didn't understand why Medusa was attacking him. He wondered where the griffin was, and then discovered that it was hidden behind a rock. The griffin then stated, I will leave the rest to you, I do not want to die. And Sal discovers that the griffin has the ability to shrink. Medusa was hissing. Sal runs as Medusa continues to attack him. Fortunately, he has already gone through this secret realm in a past life, so he has options. He charges at the Knights of the Round Table, intending to grab the shield first. He knew he'd be able to use the shield's reflection to reduce the risk of looking directly into Medusa's eyes and turning to stone. After obtaining the shield, he was able to block Medusa's attacks. Still, he was struggling due to Medusa's power. Unfortunately, he flew away and vomited blood as Medusa attacked him with full force, realizing that the shield is insufficient to keep him alive. He also knew he couldn't go away because Medusa had already destroyed the secret realm. And, based on his abilities, he knows he cannot handle Perseus' weapon. However, a part of him believes that he will not be able to confirm it unless he tries. He also determines that he will certainly die in this realm if he does not give it a shot, which is why he dashes towards the sword and grabs it. He was willing to risk everything if it meant surviving. He lifted the sword and was surprised to see that he could pick it up so easily, which he had not expected. He was stabbed by Medusa, but he didn't panic because he was still pondering why he grabbed the sword so effortlessly. He knew his talent rating was too low to wield the sword, therefore he couldn't believe what happened. He remembered in his past existence how Alan mocked him for wanting to handle the holy sword even though he was only a D-rank talent. He was tied down by a cross while Alan and Hera stood in front of him, conversing. During that moment, Alan informed his mother that Sal was still conscious and might be aware that they were about to take away his skill. Hera then told him that simple memory loss magic would solve the situation, so he didn't need to worry about anything. He recalled Alan stealing his swordsmanship talent. Surprisingly, Sal possessed the power of the sword. Griffin had no idea what was going on because Sal had broken off the bind unharmed. Sal looks at Medusa angrily. Then Sal swung his sword, cutting off the Medusa's head. Griffin thought this kid is a monster. In his past life, he had a sword talent that could have been S or higher. But the matriarch used magic to take away his skill and give it to Alan before erasing his memories. But now he learned the truth. After dealing with Medusa, he quickly collects Medusa's blood and laughs like a madman, confusing Griffin as to why he is suddenly acting differently, and thinks about how everything was becoming increasingly interesting. Because of what he uncovered, express his desire to deal with Alan and his family as soon as possible. Griffin decided that it was better to leave the strange kid and was about to flee when Sal called him back. Griffin returned to him, asking, My lord, what is the matter? Sal finds it fascinating that Griffin suddenly becomes terrified of him, despite the fact that he is an S-rank monster. Sal asked whether his head was made of metal, but Griffin was baffled by his question. After explaining, he flew into the tunnel and began demolishing it. He was compelled to bump into the wall, which resulted in a lump on his head. At the same time, Griffin understands Sal had always intended to use him to destroy the secret realm. He allowed Sal to get away with it because he knows how to cure his kids. After a few minutes, the secret realm was utterly destroyed, and Medusa was buried beneath the crumbled rocks. Griffin returned to the fiery cliff with Sal. Then he said Sal's entire name and blessed him with a body that would never be wounded regardless of how he gets attacked. Sal was covered in Griffin's magic. During the process, he feels his body has gotten stronger and some of his minor injuries have healed. He believes it would be beneficial because reducing his body's injuries would eliminate the need for him to constantly transfer his injuries to Alan, which could make the matriarch suspicious. Furthermore, he decides to conceal his S-rank sword talent for the time being to avoid causing any unnecessary obstacles. After blessing him, he handed Griffin Medusa's blood and told him to give it to his offspring so that the young eagle's wings would recover. 
Griffin quickly accepted it and let his kid drink it. The healing process began instantly, and the baby eagle flew joyfully, knowing he was fully healthy. Griffin, on the other hand, was overjoyed to see his kid's energy restored thanks to Sal's assistance. Sal said it just knows how to fly for the time being, but if it does not accept a master before reaching adulthood, it will become a foolish bird. But Griffin didn't get what he meant. So he talks about how Griffin only grew strong after accepting a master. Griffin agreed knowing that he wouldn't have awoken his intelligence and became even stronger if his master hadn't given him human brains on a daily basis. His master has been dead for a hundred years. Therefore, he has no idea where he can find another powerful and ruthless master like the one he had before. His eyes glittered as he thought that he could choose Sal Cooper as the master of his kids. The Griffin asks Sal to take his child as his pet monster. Griffin feels that because Sal possesses amazing intelligence and skills above anyone his age, he may even surpass his own master in the future. Sal smirked, knowing Griffin had taken the bait. Sal says he'll welcome it as his pet monster, but only on one condition. He told Griffin that he wanted all of Griffin's information on Bled Cooper, as well as the valuable key that could unlock the location where the Cooper family worships the sword ghost Bled. The scene quickly shifts to Cooper's palace, where Hera receives word from her subordinate that they've been unable to determine why Alan continually faints. She asks, are you saying that the young master's frequent fainting comes out of thin air? How long will this situation continue? Her subordinate assured her that Alan was safe thanks to the Shadow Oath. Furthermore, Hera had those little shadows assist Alan in suffering his injuries and provide him with strength. Hera agreed with her subordinate, but she felt absurd about the entire situation because Alan began to faint on the day of the Shadow Oath ceremony. So she concluded that someone was behind it. After reporting on Alan's health, the servant advised her that she needed to attend to another vital problem for the time being, and describes how Sal Cooper won first place in the competence exam, as they had predicted. The problem was that Sal Cooper used the griffin to kill two of their guys and turned the young eagle into Sal's pet monster. Hera was astonished to hear it. She panicked and put down the glass of tea she was carrying while asking her subordinate where Sal was. Hera stood and was going to approach Sal until Sal entered the room and asked Hera how he could assist her. Hera then questioned why he killed those two men on the flaming cliff. Sal responded, I did it all for the family. A three-year-old child killed a shadow police much like him. He is so useless. The Coopers don't need trash like him. Don't you agree, madam? And Sal Cooper's response simply baffled Hera. Sal knew from her expression that she was angry and disgusted. Sal expected her to hold a trump card, but he was not afraid of her. Hera smiled and told Josh to reward Sal Cooper with a trip to Eden Springs. Sal thanked her, and it seemed like a coincidence to him because he was actually intending to go to the location. He then left Hera's residence, and Hera instructed her servant Josh to remove Sal's talent before the Sword Spirit Inheritance Ceremony and use it on Alan. She decides that her son's position as heir will be endangered if Alan's secret of having no skill for swordsmanship is revealed. She was furious and called him a bastard, but she chose to remain calm for the time being and wait to see how arrogant Sal Cooper could be. Meanwhile, Sal Cooper was already in Eden Springs. There was a pool in this place, but he never went swimming. He simply walks, recalling what Griffin told him. Griffin stated that his master used forbidden magic to lock his spirit at the bottom of Eden Spring before dying. The goal is to pass down the swordsmanship accumulated over his life to the heir with S-level swordsmanship talent, as well as to ensure that the Cooper family's status in the Empire does not deteriorate, and he handed Sal the key. He told Sal to swim down the undercurrent after reaching the bottom of the springs, and he would enter an underground cave. The key's function is to guide Sal to meet Griffin's master. Griffin also indicated that there is something unusual going on in Eden Springs, but he has been apart from his master for too long to know what it is. Sal felt something unusual about it, and he believes it is difficult to inherit swordsmanship before Alan. While he was thinking, the youngsters in the pool recognized him as the first place finisher in qualifying and training, and he also tamed Griffin's cub, which amazed them. Then a boy says, what's so wonderful about that? He's just the son of a prostitute. He is Lucianja, Reynolds' henchman, and he is accompanied by Reynolds' Oles, 
the son of the Kappa's coachman. Congratulations. I didn't realize you could run like a skinny monkey and get to the top of the mountain first, Reynolds sarcastically told Sal. Lucian then laughed because of what he had stated. At the same time, Sal remembered that in his previous life, both of these men appeared to be his subordinates, but they were actually Alan's pawns. And they are the ones who raised those baseless claims against him, accusing him of working with the enemy and treason. These men were also used to getting away with things because they got Alan's backing. He was not responding to Reynold, which made Reynold feel offended and clench his fist, intending to strike Sal while questioning whether Sal's indestructible body would work. Sal remained mute, but he seized Reynold's fist, shocking him. Okay, I'll show you. Sal whispered and clutched his arm. Reynolds shouted in pain. Lucian was worried about him. He gets a knife and rushes towards Sal. But then he trembled when he launched an attack. Because Sal used him as a shield, he struck Reynold rather than Sal. At the same moment, Reynolds vomited blood. Sal then shoved Reynolds' body into Lucian, causing both kids to fly away in the water. Sal planned it with the knowledge that Cassie's water pool would cure their wounds. He was also looking forward to honing his ability with these two the next time by making their lives miserable. Sal smelled the back magic that emerged as Reynold fell below the sea. He has no idea how such an awful forbidden art, no less than blood magic, can develop in a spring capable of healing the injured and sick. He then thinks that it could be what Griffin means by strange, but nonetheless, he cannot simply go down to the bottom of the spring. He must discover a means to reach the bottom of the spring by avoiding contact with the water. Then a little girl was pulled by the man while pleading for help, and Sal was surprised to hear her familiar voice. The man replies, If you can't even serve tea and water, you deserve a beating. And the little girl responds that she didn't mean it and begs the man to let her go. Sal stares at the kid, knowing she's Andrea. The man dragging Andrea's hair was enraged because he felt insulted when Andrea responded and was ready to strike her. But before he could, he was cut in half by Sal, who was holding a sword with anger. The girl was stunned while the other children fled to report Sal for murder. Sal approached Andrea and asked whether she was fine. Andrea was too surprised to respond. She considers Sal to be a prince. Sal assumed she was afraid of him since she did not reach out for his hand especially since he notices the girl trembling. But as he looked aside, her eyes glittered as she stared at him. She then thanks him for saving her and introduces herself as Andrea, before asking for his name. Sal Cooper then recalled being with Andrea in his previous life. Andrea was a healer who treated him whenever he was hurt as she was his best friend in the past life. Now she has a magical gift that outshines anyone her age. They had also fought together temporarily for a few days. Andrea, a five-year-old, was cute to him right now. He was delighted while glancing at the girl. Then he says that helping others is what a gentleman should do. He also told her to call him Sal and asked whether she knew how to drain the spring or get in without touching any water. He feels he can discover a solution with Andrea's assistance. Then she asks if he is also aware of this. But Sal questioned what she meant. Andrea whispered to him that, while the spring contains odd power that can heal injuries, anyone who uses it will never be able to accept another form of healing magic and must rely solely on the spring to recover from their injuries. Sal then got it. He thinks that it is another method for the Cooper family to control the shadows, forcing them to beg the family for assistance when they are in pain. Andrea grabbed his hand and offered him assistance, allowing her to express her gratitude. That is to allow him to enter the spring without touching the water. She does not wait for Sal's reaction before activating her magic power. Covered both her and Sal. According to her, this magic is known as duck magic, and it allows individuals to become like ducks. Ducks are able to dive into water without wetting their feathers. Sal smiled as he realized what this magic was really called. Isolation magic. And he believes Andrea named it herself just like she did in the past. At this point, the guards arrived to arrest Sal for murder. He instantly rushed away, pulling Andrea's hand, and jumped into the pool, with no guards daring to pursue them as Sal went down deeper. He feels the spring's undercurrent and decides that this section of the spring could be the location Griffin mentioned. Andrea was telling him that they couldn't go any farther and that they both needed to leave quickly. 
but of course Sal did not listen. The current grew stronger and dragged them in until they couldn't resist anymore. Meanwhile, Andrea wakes up Sal, who lost consciousness as they reached the deeper area. Sal gently raises his upper body and glances around them, unsure if this is the location Griffin mentioned. He takes the key from his pocket, and Andrea asks what it is. Sal explains that it is a gem key, capable of unlocking the location where a sword spirit can be worshipped. Because there was no door in this location, he believed that it needed to be summoned. Andrea then requests the key because she feels she can summon it, even though she is unfamiliar with the term sword spirit. She then used her abilities to ask for the key's master and open the door to this location. Sal then sensed an approaching danger. There were flower animals who arrived and immediately attacked them, so he grabbed Andrea and jumped away. They landed on the ground. The air became foggy, and Sal finally noticed the doorway that appeared in front of them. He noticed Andrea was unconscious. He then carried her to a safe location. He realized that he had no choice but to let Andrea rest for a time. He then activates the invisibility magic Andrea taught him in his past life, ensuring she is not easily discovered if there is danger. He also expects to fight a terrible battle before receiving the sword spirit's inheritance. He slowly entered the portal. He is stunned as he sees thousands of corpses, and the murderer stood above them all. The creature was holding a lady. His face was frightening. He looked at Sal and said he had a guest. Eden Spring is a medicinal hot spring that appears on the surface. However, in actuality, it is where the Cooper family keeps their concubines. At this moment, Sal realizes their true fate. He discovered that each of them had become food for the sword demon. The beast approached him, but he showed no fear. He looks at it angrily, and the monster says Sal has the smell of an S-rank skill. Sal then jumped away from the monster, wondering how the monster knew he possessed an S-rank talent. This monster then summoned a blood weapon while claiming that Sal did not appear pampered at all, leading him to believe that Sal is simply a bastard child who has come to claim the inheritance. While shouting such comments, he charged at Sal and attempted an attack, but Sal blocked his weapon. The monster said he will not give it to him easily unless he could go around him. Sal then told him not to fear because he had simply come to destroy the beast. The creature swung its blade and said, As expected of my bled Cooper descendant, you're insane. He drew closer to Sal, who likewise moved backward. They fight with swords, but the monster manages to hit Sal's chest. Sal groaned in pain and fell to the ground. The creature then teases him for being too weak. The beast was startled when he noticed something. He noted that Sal's wound was slowly healing. He believes it was due to the griffin's blessing, and he stated that he had not expected the griffin to acknowledge Sal. Right now, he was thinking that blood sacrificed is a great amount of the monster's power to seal his soul. He also believes there is yet a glimmer of hope for him to receive the inheritance with his current abilities. His aura has changed from what it was before. A golden cross suddenly appeared alongside the beast. The creature was aware that this was a magic restricting blood formation. He was crucified and shouted in pain. Sal claims the monster has been dead for much too long, and he is unaware that the Empire has already investigated and developed means to combat blood magic over the last hundred years. Sal explained that at this time, he intended to steal the monster's heart and violently claim the inheritance. The monster shouted no, but then smiled. Surprisingly, he removed himself from the cross, leaving Sal puzzled as to what had just occurred. The monster jumped away from him, laughing loudly to tease Sal, and remarked that Sal was quite interesting. He also mentioned that it had been a long since he had played with a small mouse. Blood trickled from his palm, and he said, The game is already over, and I'm not playing anymore. As blood had fallen on the ground, the blood spirits were summoned. At the same time, the monster agreed that Sal does have some skill and potential. It's just that they're insufficient to support his sword skill inheritance. The blood spirits began to attack Sal. He confirmed that the sword demon was very powerful, as it could use blood to control blood spirits. He tried his best to prevent the spirit's attack, but there were too many, and he was cut in the back. The spirits were hovering, and Sal saw that their attacks were overly concentrated. He then activates the holy sword protection. 
Unfortunately, the sword demon tapped Sal's protection, which smashed to bits. Sal was dumbfounded. The sword demon suffocated him before lifting him up, warning him that once a cat has finished playing with a mouse, the mouse will be eaten. Sal was in pain right now, but he was aware that his blood and mana were draining away. The monster claims that his aura is familiar and that it tastes like a concubine that he had eaten previously, and he inquires whether it was his mother. Because of what he had just stated, Sal's senses began to return. This is great. Give me a taste of her child, the monster said, and something reddish broke into pieces. He remembers his mother, his wonderful memories with her, and the day his mother abandoned him while he begged her to return. Then others would throw rocks at him while calling him names, and they would make fun of him by saying his mother abandoned him because he was unwanted trash. Then he would shout at them, claiming that his mother did not throw him away, and now he is outraged after learning what happened. He stabs the beast with his sword. The monster threw him away after discovering Sal was using blood magic in order to kill him. The monster is now exhausted from spending so much energy and must consume another body to refill it. The monster was busy restoring his energy. Sal stabs him in the face and asks if his mother is delicious. And when he remembers her face, he becomes enraged and begins top-stabbing the beast like a psychopath. And the monster begs him to spare him since he will be valuable to him. Sal responds that he is unworthy of serving and kills him. The swordsmanship inheritance will be implanted in the body after absorption. Sal now believes he has been motherless since birth and all he remembers are some sad fantasies he created in his head. And now he is a pathetic monster and nothing else. Then he saw a reflection of his mother hugging him, reassuring him that he is not a monster and that his mother will always be by his side. Andrea then comes storming in and asks him why he is covered in blood and if he is okay and begins to treat him. Sal then remembers that she met the same fate as a concubine and hugs her, vowing not to let that tragedy happen again. The disappearance of the sword spirit or monster caused a stir among the family, and all of the guardians of Eden Spring were executed. After witnessing Sal's cruelty, the servants never dared to bother Andrea again. Despite all the lies, Sal is accused of being the cause of the monster's disappearance. Still, due to a lack of evidence, the matriarch can only put pressure on persecution. Even though she tried a lot of ways to put the blame on Sal, every attempt failed miserably as Sal was able to survive all the accusations because there was no evidence. After four years at the Cooper family training ground, Alan slashes someone, and as the victim goes down, he begs for mercy. Then we meet the head of the Isaac family, Duke Hugh Isaac, and the leader of the Cooper family, Duke Leon Cooper. Hugh Isaac compliments Alan on his swordsmanship, implying that the notion of him having S-rank swordsmanship talent may not be a rumor. Then we witness Sal use his shadow blade to beat four guys in an instant. Hugh Isaac is astonished at witnessing Sal's talent at his age. Sal has reached the Silver Sword Guardian stage as someone of his age should only be an Iron Sword Apprentice. Alan gets angry because Sal stole his spotlight, and he challenges Sal to a duel. Sal agrees, thinking he'll utilize this opportunity to demonstrate his abilities. Alan thinks this is the perfect moment to pretend he killed him by accident. And all the guys around them are rooting for Alan. Then Alan struck first but was easily blocked by Alan. Sal then mocks him, telling him to use more force or that Madam isn't feeding him enough, and pushes him back with ease. Alan is taken aback as his mother tells him that he should be stronger than anybody else in the family and rushes ahead. Sal dodges it thinking he is so weak that the magic force embedded in the blade is insufficient. It's also evident that it was artificially improved. Alan concludes that he has no swordsmanship talent. Then he jumps towards him, saying, let me show you what a real strike looks like, and strikes Alan with his sword, which lands in his eye. As Alan cries in pain, everyone rushes to help him. On the other hand, Hugh Isaac appears delighted by the scenario. He remarks that he has made a mistake in judging Alan's abilities and wonders if the servants he defeated were only pretending. Leon Cooper says Hugh Isaac is being disrespectful and tells him to stop. Hugh apologizes and explains that Alan is engaged to his younger sister, and he does not want her sister to marry a useless man. Leon tells Hugh that he is worrying too much, 
as if the royal family had not permitted this marriage. He doubts his sister may have ever married someone. Both of them appear to be slightly offended by one another. Hugh then leaves, promising he won't bother him again and reminding him of the upcoming joint operation in 10 days, and leaves. Leon regards Alan as garbage and wonders who the little shadow is. The maid informs him that his name is Sal and that he is the child of one of the mistresses. However, it is unclear which mistress's son he is. Leon believes it's no surprise that his son has such exceptional sword skills. And the maid to summon Sal to his study room. Sal kneels in the study room in front of Leon Cooper, the family's head. Leon believes Sal is concealing his strength on purpose in order to grab the air position when the moment arises. He thinks Sal is clever, but he is still a little brat and is too simple to read. Then he declares that he will lead the Shadow Army in ten days and travel to the Lost Crystal City with the Isaac family to retrieve the Dragon Egg, and hands him the weapon that will activate the teleportation to Crystal City. Sal believes that no matter how the mission goes, he will undoubtedly anger the demonic dragon and that Leon must not have had good intentions in sending him there. But he doesn't want to lose a chance to get a dragon egg, so he accepts the mission. However, he makes only one request. Leon says, what was the request? With a death stare. Then we find Sal leading the shadow army, and his request is that Andrea accompany him as she wonders if it is okay for her to sit there because the family head has sent her to serve him. Sal believes it's fine and asks the two guys he beat up last time whether they mind. They say that they do not mind it. When they get to the Crystal City, everyone appears to be surprised as to where the dragon egg is. Then someone mocks the Cooper family's elite squad for not understanding basic details about Crystal City. The person who criticized them was Gloria Isaac, the Isaac family's head sister, and Alan's fiance. She then extends her arm, asking if he is Sal Cooper, and introduces herself, but Sal ignores her like a chad and asks Andrea to stay with Mio, his pet monster who appears to have grown significantly in just four years. Gloria, who is still angry, insists she is talking to him only. Sal then says that if they do not activate the portal together before nightfall, the trip will be useless. Then he recalls how she used to bug him in his previous life asking him to train with her, and believes that he still ended up meeting this troublesome woman in this life also. Then he decides he only wants to pray that foolish bird Mio can do the mission assigned to it. Then both of them activate the altar. Everyone comments about how gorgeous Crystal City is. The Isaac family soldier then decides that if he kills the Cooper family's men and takes back the dragon egg for himself, the family head will reward him and he attacks them. However, a sudden explosion occurs, and the light sentinel that protects Crystal City arrives. Gloria rushes towards a light sentinel and attacks it. Then she calls the soldier as trash and asks why he acted without her permission. The soldier claims he was doing it for the family, but Gloria says it seemed like he was doing it for himself. The soldier warns her to look behind her, but it was too late because the light sentinels are already attacking her. Then Sal kills those two Light Sentinels and commands his Shadow Army to take the position and attack the Light Sentinel. They do as he says and bind them with their Shadow Power then Sal finishes them all. The Isaac family soldiers are impressed by the Cooper family soldiers, especially with Sal Cooper's strength despite his young age. Gloria appears to have fallen for Sal and believes Sal Cooper is very outstanding. Then Sal takes the crystal and absorbs its energy instantly raising his level from Silver Sword Guardian to Gold Sword Master. Then he inserts the crystal into the pillar, causing the altar to move downward. Then they arrive in the Demonic Dragon's Cave, which appears terrifying, as they are surrounded by the dragon's eggs. Okay guys, part 01 ends here. And if you want more videos on this manhwa, I want 2000 like on this video, and make sure to comment which part you like the most, and don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.